the people of the Commonwealth. That's been his job through the years. And uh, uh, let me just read a few things to you that uh, I picked up off of the internet that will show what he's supposed to do. Now, the jurisdiction and responsibilities of the office. As this brief historical survey shows, the Office of Attorney General acquired broad responsibilities early in its development. This process has continued to the present, the product both of legislative and judicial renouncements. Today, the Attorney General is clearly established as the Commonwealth Chief Law Officer. He is also, in a less easily defined way, the people's lawyer charged with protecting the people's interest. Now, the law requires that the mortgagees be assessed on their estate interest prior to assessing the remaining estate interest on the mortgagor, which means the taxes have to be divided between the mortgagee and the mortgagor, with the mortgagee paying their interest share first. I understand what you said, uh, and I hope they did, uh, but the law will be on there and they could read it. And what the law says is that the assessors have to assess the mortgagee, which are the banks or private mortgagees that lent you money, either to fix your house and recorded a mortgage down at the Registry of Deeds, or when you bought your house, gave you some money to buy your house and recorded the mortgage down at the Registry of Deeds, and they became the mortgagee. And the law says they have to be taxed for their estate interest before you are taxed. In other words, the assessors have to assess them first. Now, they own the property. They have prior ownership. They don't have possession. You have possession. You're the janitor. You clean it up. You maintain it. Uh, they're protected. You have to insure it. Uh, if something happens, they, they threaten to foreclose on you. Uh, if, if, you if it's in disrepair or something. And uh, they write all kind of conditions. But they own it. As long as that mortgage is there, they got prior ownership. So therefore, they have to pay their estate interest as taxable under the Constitution. That's what John was saying. And the law that tells the assessors what to do, the law that they violated, is right there on the screen. You can read it. And while you're reading it, after you read it, I hope it's clear. If it isn't clear, I'll try to read it, but I'll leave it there in case it gets clear, and I'll try to read it exactly as the law reads. Chapter 59, Section 12, Mortgage Real Estate. Section 12, if any person has an interest in real estate, not exempt from taxation under Section 5, as the holder of a duly recorded mortgage given to secure the payment of a fixed and certain sum of money, the amount of his interest as mortgagee shall be assessed as real estate in the town where the land lies, that's by the assessors, and the mortgagor shall be assessed only, now that's only, for the value of such real estate after deducting the assessed value of the interest therein of such mortgagee. Now that's clear. The assessors cannot tax you if you have a mortgage until they tax the bank and send them a bill. And then, only afterwards, can they send you a bill. Now they send you the bill, they send you threatening letters, they're going to foreclose, and they cause you a failure to pay the bank's taxes as delinquent and publish it in the papers and the credit bureaus, and you can't get credit, and you're going to pay 16% interest while the banks are holding all the money and should have paid it, and the assessors never asked them for a dime, violating the, the, the order the general law 
violating the law and the Attorney General the Attorney General hasn't indicted them okay now they have been committing fraud on the homeowners and on property owners aiding and abetting the banks to escape the estate taxation to which they're liable under the Constitution they have joined together to betray the people, to betray you, to cheat you, to rob you, to steal from you, playing games with you, abusing their power and authority. Yes, they were in bed with each other. They had to be. And the Attorney General is protecting them. And any judge that gets the case before him and doesn't hold them accountable or doesn't stop them from sending out fraudulent bills aids and abets them these are civil rights violations they're taking the food off your children's table 14 million children go to bed hungry in America we never had it so good on Wall Street, we never had it so good. The balloon is flying, it's inflated. High-tech stocks. People pouring money on the Internet. How vulnerable that is. The best place to steal money from people is on the Internet. You couldn't get a dime back if you send $100 or $1,000 to anybody on the Internet and they, they don't deliver, you can't get a dime back. We're in, for being, we're in for the biggest fiasco you ever saw. Now, the phone number's there. You want to call in about this law and what you could do to join in the suit so you can get your money and get accountability. Feel free to call up. Feel free to say whatever you want. And if you're angry at me because your mother or your brother is enjoying some of the fruits of the syndicated crime against property owners by a betrayed public servants who betrayed us. If you're one of them and, you, and, you, and you, you're enjoying the fruit, the evil fruit, you know, from the poison tree, and you're angry at me, I don't blame you, but I'm saying going to be held accountable. So, maybe I keep you awake. Call up if you want. Say whatever you want. Ask a question. We'll clear it up. Anytime you want, call up. John, you have anything to say in case somebody calls up? Well, <clears throat> a little while ago they had a number on the screen for the governor's office and the attorney general's office. And uh, I'm suggesting that if, if you want to get a copy of the law from them to make sure that what we've given you for information is true, just give them a call and say, Good, could you give us a copy of General Law 59, Section 12? And uh, they'll give you exactly what we had on the screen for you. Um, Listen, if you know any of your friends that have mortgages or may have had mortgages or lost their homes, tell them to call us up. Go ahead, John. Well, sure. Uh, the other thing is, is <coughs> these are actually hate crimes where they're taking from you in a criminal manner against the law. And uh, they do have... Uh, the Massachusetts Civil Rights Act and they commonly refer to, refer to it as the hate crime statute. It was established to protect the rights of all citizens and visitors to Massachusetts. Under the MCRA an individual may obtain an injunction if he or she is the victim of threats, intimidation, or coercion on the basis of his or her protected category or protected activity which means protected activities activities which yes. means you can hate them it means they, they don't have protected activities to commit fraud right so you can hate them if you want to hate somebody we'll tell you who to hate legally you have a right to hate them because the activities they're in are fraud and it's not you know an activity that's protected as a matter of fact the only thing that uh, the protection, the only protection that they have is that they're protected from the Attorney General from not being indicted. 
Well, he, he's supposed to act against these uh, activities, and uh, <coughs> they've made statutes where <laughs> the people are the people in government are protected, providing they act within the scope of their duty. And so far, they haven't been acting within the scope of their duties. If they're taxing you, not in accordance with the statute or within the guidelines of the Constitution, which nowhere gives them the right to tax you on your estate debt. Right. So if they haven't acted in the line of the duty, then you can hate them because they're, they're abusing you and they're cheating you. So you can hate them like you can hate the devil or you can hate a killer. Well, you don't have to worry about being indicted for hating a killer or hating uh, the devil. And, and, and you can hate them because it's not in their line of their duty. And they're committing fraud. So you're still free to hate some people. Go ahead. Well, uh, now the Attorney General is supposed to be able to pull up an injunction against these people in order to stop them. That's what the Civil Rights Act is supposed to give him the authority to do. Uh, it says uh, an injunction is legally enforceable uh, is legally a forcible civil order issued by the court that prohibits a perpetrator from committing certain actions. A violation of a civil injunction is a criminal offense and can, and can subject the perpetrator to two and a half years in a house of correction or if bodily results, the perpetrator is subject to ten years in state prison. You mean to say if a judge doesn't issue a restraining order against the assessors that he can be indicted and go to jail for two years? According to this. Well, he has the power, responsibility to stop said violation. And it's a civil rights violation. I know that he could be joined in and indicted under the Civil Rights Act, 1983, Title 1842, the federal law. But I didn't know, John, that might apply to a judge. If a judge has the power to stop people who are violating the law and he doesn't do it, well, if he doesn't stop them, that, mean he's, he, that must mean that he's joining them. Well, that's what it says there, isn't it? And that's he can be says. indicted. Well, how come they don't indict these judges that don't interpret the law the way the law is supposed to be interpreted? I'm not sure. They, it, the, it seems like they're all in it together. These, thing, these things that they're doing couldn't be done by one person alone. Of course not. 360-some-odd cities and towns and every assessor sending phony, we have a phony phone bills call. out. Let's see what we got here. Hello? Hello, Bill. Yes. Why do you think that the Attorney General is not uh, prosecuting this or, or bringing this, this law forward? You know, if, if this is... Uh, we'll have to ask him. All, all that you say to this, you know, it, it Why don't we ask him? strange that, you know, uh, maybe he's not aware of it. Because, no, uh, we made know, him aware of it. He's aware. aware of all the laws. No, and he's the same way with the assessors, you know. Do you think all the assessors are aware of this? We, I'm going to yeah. hang up and listen, okay? Okay. Now, the, uh, thank well, you. the assessors can't be assessors unless they understand the law. They knew or they should have known. The Attorney General knows that the banks have been committing consumer fraud against potential homeowners and people securing mortgages, knowing that they're, they're transferring the liability that the banks must pay under the Constitution on their estate interest to the consumer. The Attorney General knows that a contract between private parties cannot invalidate the Constitution or public policy, which says to maintain this government, everybody must pay equally and share the burden. And if they own property, the statute says that the assessors shall assess the banks. Now, the assessors were made aware. The Attorney General was made aware. They are aware, they've been aware, this was a planned conspiracy in order to play ball with the carpetbaggers and the money changers. Let's face reality. These people are smart people. They got elected to office. They raised millions of dollars. They got appointed to office. They know how to use Vaseline. They know what they're doing. Now, if you want to know what the attorney, why the attorney general hasn't done anything, call him. 
We'll give you the number. Give them the number. Put the number back up on the... Give the Attorney there. General's number. <coughs> and, uh... Let them call the Attorney General. Give them <coughs> the number. Now, the Attorney General's number is 1-617-727-6... No, 2200. And the Governor's number is 1-617-727-6250. Uh, if we're lucky, we can get it back up on the board, and we'll show it on the television, and you can, uh, there it is right there. <coughs> now, now the if you call these people and ask them why, or ask them to give you a copy of the law, and they show you a copy of the law, they send it to you, they'll send it to you, you'll know that they know, because they have more access to these laws than normal, ordinary people do. That's right. Now, you call up, and when you get music on hold, and they tell you, Wait a minute, and you're going to listen to some kind of music you don't like, and then you get somebody and said, who do you want? And you say, the Attorney General. And they say, who are you? And you tell them, what do you want? Who are you? It makes a difference who you are. And wait a minute, we'll transfer you, and it's going to go, and you're going to get clicked off the phone, and you're going to be there, so you're going to have to be patient for at least two and a half hours, all right? Now, try it tomorrow, and when you get nervous, you know, you know what you do? You call up the Attorney General, and you send him a note, and you tell him, Bill Foley says to hate you, because you're protecting, you're protecting a bunch of fraudulent banks and assessors. And he says, if you want to indict him for saying, hate the Attorney General, he invites you to indict him for hate, hating the Attorney General. I, I'll take the beef, because I'm going to tell you something. You people should be sick and tired of that music on hold business. And they call you a customer. You're a citizen. <coughs> You're not a customer. They don't have a business. This is a country. They're your servants. I mind treating you like a customer. Well, it's possible to get through a lot sooner. I, I called the Secretary of State's office on a different issue about a week ago, and, and they put me through within about five, six minutes. I was through to pretty good. To the party you wanted? Yes, at the party I wanted, and, and it was okay. It was a different issue, of course, so it went pretty fast. But uh, as far as getting information, even the uh, Citizen Information Service can, can get you the information as far as the law is concerned. But it would be a good idea for everybody to ask the Attorney General himself, to give them the information, to let, them know, let him know that you're out here and you want to have your damages restored. You want to be paid for losing the money that you lost because you were forced to pay somebody else's taxes. Oh. You want him to enforce the law and to let him know that you're interested. This, this will give you uh, a more advantage <coughs> in understanding what's going on. Nobody's going to get anything unless you go to court and get a jury of peers and uh, let them make a judgment. And uh, we're not going to get anything unless you join in on a suit, in a class action suit, because individually, all I can do is file a suit on my behalf. And if I do that, and then I threaten to file a class action suit on your behalf, they're going to come to me and say, look, we'll pay you and straighten it out. Forget all about the people. People are a mob. There's a parade going on. There's music playing. You're a smart guy, Bill. We'll take care of you. Forget the people. That's what they're going to say. That's what they're going to say. So I'm telling you, if you want to do something about it, and you want to get what you entitled to, you've got to file a claim, and you can't do it alone. Because you're not as smart as me. All right? I can take care of myself. But I'm saying, I don't like people lying to me and telling me and insulting me and telling me that they're doing the righteous thing and I know they're down there committing fraud not only against me, but the whole community. Now, I've got my grandchildren to protect. They wouldn't have a chance. They wouldn't have a chance tomorrow to survive. Not the kids today looking at Sesame Street running around buying plastic toys and hamburgers in Disneyland. Come on. The kids haven't got a chance tomorrow. 
You have to know the tricks, the trade. I know them. And I know what they're doing. You can hold them accountable. I know how. Okay. Now, the thing is, is, is we have the complaint all formulated. Now, <clears throat> we're looking to have 20 other homeowners sign on with us before we file it because <coughs> we can't maintain a class action unless there's more than 10 people on the complaint initially. They're going to have to represent themselves. Right. Each individual will represent themselves. And the only thing they need to do is show that they have a mortgage, that they have been assessed, for the estate interest of the bank by the assessor of the town in which they live and hold the property. But it's not only a class action, it has to be a citizen suit for accountability. Now, you need 10 for both, all right? Now, when you have a citizen suit for accountability, it comes under the Constitution that you are the sovereign. And everybody, including the governor, are your mere substitutes and accountable to you at any time. So when you file a citizen suit, as well as a class action, pertinent to the complaint where you're personally affected, and it affects the general public, and as long as you constitute a committee of ten or more, you can issue summonses and writs of discovery, and you can go forward and hold them accountable. Actually, you might be able to petition them and summons them on a writ called Quororanto, where the sovereign king says, I order you to come here and explain to me why you didn't obey my law. Why you didn't obey my law, and why I shouldn't remove you from office. That's what you could do. Now you have to understand it. I know you people don't understand that. And lawyers understand it, but they're afraid. You know, they want to go along with uh, playing both ends of the middle. They're great for that. You know, th you know they, they sit down and have breakfast together. They, they talk nice and calm and rational. They enjoy wealthy clients. Each one having a wealthy client, they say, well, I'm good for 500 there. You're good for 500 here. Let's go to lunch. Well, let's run this case six months or seven months. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There has to be some kind of judicial reform. Now, politicians running for office will tell you, I'm for judicial reform. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There's got to be a cleaning out of the judiciary, and no, it has to be cleaned out, the Bar Association. That private corporation has taken over a branch of government. They're running that thing on a non-profit fraud. They're a professional group. They have an industry called law. They took over our courts, and they're going to make that the biggest money machine that they ever had in their life. That's better than a slot machine at Vegas. That bar association and those schemers and plotters made rules and regulations that'll keep you in limbo litigating for six or seven years until they clean your estate out of your bank account. That's how, that's how terrible they are. And none of their rules were properly promulgated. None of them are constitutional, the court rules, because they advertised them only in the Lawyers Weekly, and they didn't allow you the right to consent or object. They held these meetings i.e. instant example, like the tyrant king. At odd hours in weird places where you couldn't get there to project, uh, protest, or object. No, they pretended. They're evil people. They're evil people. They're intelligent people. Very intelligent people. Rootless people. Well, now, they I, shouldn't be doing that. I found, <clears throat> after doing a little research, that 20% uh, or 21% of the House of Representatives is controlled by lawyers. They're in there orchestrating what legislation will be made. Uh, they have 42% control of the Senate. That means when they write laws, these laws are being formulated to promote litigation to get you into the courtroom. Of course. So that they can take your money from you by promoting 
long court hours and for putting you into an appeal process that cost you three times more than the original uh, case would cost you if you went straight to trial by jury. Lawyers love laws. They love to make all laws. They'll make a million laws. And they'll make three million unnecessary laws. You see, they'll make laws so that they can create unrest so they can arrest you. That's a child psychology of the CIA as they disrupt uh, not disorganized people and how they keep them separated and how they make them do things so that they can arrest them, either take their liberty away, take their freedom away, take their children away, take their houses away. It's awful. It's awful. Now I'm going to say those lawyers are professional at that. Now, but what did they do? They are officers of the court. They are members of the judiciary. See, but the judiciary and the, and the lawyers and the bars are so overreaching with power that they lost track. What they did, they said, we're going to make all the lawyers officers of the court. Otherwise, we can't control them. So the court wanted to control them. The bar association wanted to control them. Or they can't practice law. And they're going to go to their law schools and their curriculum. Right? And they made them officers of the court. Now... Their officers of the court, members of the judiciary, became legislators. Well, the Constitution says separation of powers. You cannot be an officer of the court and sit constitutionally as governor. You cannot be an officer of the court and sit constitutionally as a legislator or in the Senate, or in Congress, or in the President. You can't be a lawyer, be an officer of the court, under the control of the judiciary, without violating the separation of powers prohibited the Constitution that says they cannot create a conflict of interest. <coughs> For then we will become a government not controlled by the rule of law, will be a government controlled by men, evil men. Now, Governor Salucci is an attorney. He was a partner in the Hudson Law <coughs> Firm of Kittredge, Salucci and Maria. Salucci received his law degree from Boston Law College in, in 1973. In 1970, he graduated from Boston College School of Management, where he served as a reserve officer training corps. Uh, now, that means that he is the executive officer of the state as an officer of the court holding two different branches of the government. He, he's doing double jobs both in conflict with the Constitution. Right. And he's a member of a political party. Right? That's right. Named the Republican Party. And he has a challenge or he had challenges called Democrats. And both political parties were people. They got together and had a right to associate. But they didn't have a right to become gangs and gangsters. And they didn't have a right to have you vote for a political party and not a person. We're not a parliamentary type of government. <coughs> we're a republic. You do not elect labor parties or Democratic parties, or Republican parties, or count votes. Democrat or Republican. It's a violation of the Constitution to count votes in that manner. It's a violation of the law and the public trust to conduct an election that supports and finances political parties. We are not a parliamentary democracy. Other countries are. We're the only country that had a unique constitution that said we're a republican democracy. We're a de government of the people, by the people, for the people. And it's got to be guaranteed. And those two political parties associated themselves in the same greed and lust to de facto usurp our republican government and they swore to uphold it and made it a parliamentary type of democracy. That's an ascendancy of the kind of democracy 
of the evil king of England. They have the same democracy in England. They have labor parties and different parties. And that's what brings us to the situation where we are being charged to pay somebody else's taxes because they have the control over all branches of the government and over all sections of the government and over all municipal branches within the government. So what they're, do <coughs> excuse me, what they're doing is they're saying that we must pay somebody else's taxes. Now they had the Boston Tea Party because somebody put extra taxes on the tea and they threw it overboard for a few pennies. Here they are robbing you of thousands of dollars and it's time to stand up and say I want my money back. The only way that you can get it back is if you join the complaint. Now you can join the complaint as a first initial signer. We need like 21 people. Or... John, no, John, let me enlighten you right now. Let me enlighten the people. We don't need these 20 people. No, we don't. We, we'd I, like to have I, them look, on I'm our going side. To Boston. What I'm this is a campaign. These people are indictable. The Attorney General is lacking in his responsibility. Either we have rule by law or we have law. Now, I don't care about anything. What I'm saying is, if there are people that are hungry and lost their homes and people can't pay their bills, well, they better do something about their constitutional right. And I say keep your guns and keep them greased because the music is going to change. Things are going to get sour. It's not good for everybody. There are a lot of desperate people out there. Now I'm going to tell you something. We're going to go to court. We're going to demand justice. We're going to try to keep the peace. But if they deny you the law, they deny you justice, and they keep rigging these elections, and they keep robbing the treasury, and taking your children, and having you beg for fuel, and they hike the price up to two dollars, and they'll make it now a dollar and a half. All right? First they took it up to two dollars, then it'll be a dollar and a half. They did it with butter, they did it with eggs. Cost of living increase? Not for you. Not for you, you got a minimum wage increase. And before you got it, they already went up and took it away. They had a little thing on the news today, the Keogh plans. How Americans saved the greatest amount of money for retirement. How they averaged maybe 500,000. And they said, but the government is going to take 80% of that. Unless you leave it with the bank and let them keep reinvesting it. And then maybe you'll have six million. You believe them? One thing for sure, the government's going to take 80%. But it isn't your government that's taking 80%. It's the people who took over your government that's taking 80%. And it's not going into your public treasury for you. It's going in the public treasury through the back door and in their pocket for them. Now, the courts have got to be reformed. Judicial accountability with a big hot Valentine's Day, you'll love it. You get those judges and make them accountable. You take the judiciary and make them accountable. You can't do it alone. Let's get together. Let's get together like the Sons of Liberty like Shay's Rebellion. Let's demand justice, fair and impartial trials, performance, not for the few corporations and bankers, but for the people. Now you can call up. We have a class action suit. We're going to Boston. We're going direct mail. People lost their homes. They'll sign it. They have to sign it. If you don't sign it, you don't join in, you, you don't, don't get anything. The court won't give you anything unless your name is in there and that you demand it. So do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It makes no difference. I know where we're going. You get caught in a crossfire, that's your business. Now, John, I don't know how many people are out there. 
But I do know that the newspapers will not print these stories. Of course not. Why won't the newspapers tell you what we're telling you? Why? Because they're being controlled. They're being censored. You mean, it's obvious, don't you? Well, it's obvious. If any of this was to get out, it would be by some rogue paper that's not under their control. They'd have to be some, some radical newspaper saying, okay, now we're going to stop and give the people the truth. If there was a rogue paper out there and gave them the truth, they'd send their cowboys down, they'd wreck the presses. You know what I'm saying? Something would happen. They'd send a squat team down like a Waco, and if there were 15 children in a nursery for the workers in that, in that newspaper, they would all be murdered the way they murdered those children at Waco. Now, Let's get some calls if somebody's out there. Well, anyway, <clears throat> let's, uh, I'll go on to this. Now, we can get an injunction to have them stop, according to uh, this <coughs> information under the MCRA. Uh, <coughs> an injunction will order for a victim, and everyone's a victim in this case. Everyone who owns property is a victim, whoever had a mortgage. Uh, and all other victims in, protected get, in, in the protected category are those performing a protected activity from future acts of intimidation or violence will prohibit a perpetrator <laughs> and all other acting in concert with the perpetrator from further acts of intimidation or violence. Now the intimidation that we have here is that they'll take our homes away from us through tax foreclosure if we don't pay the bank's taxes. Now, that's, that's heavy intimidation. No, they can't do that. But they're doing we, it. No, I, I'm saying if anybody enters this suit, they can't do it to them. Right. If, if you're involved in this suit, if they you can't sign do it on, to them. if you sign on, then you're protected until this complaint is handled through the court completely. If it lasts 20 years, you don't have to pay those taxes the for bank, 20 years. The bank couldn't foreclose with litigation pending accusing them of fraud in concert with the assessors. And the assessors couldn't foreclose. And neither could a court lawfully foreclose. So when the case is filed and these people are fighting there too, they can stay in their houses as long as that case doesn't go before a jury, right? They can, they can stay in that house until they get a jury trial. And I know what's going to happen when they go before a jury. The jury's going to award them damages and they're going to have their house free and clear. That's what's going to happen. jury will rule against the banks and against the assessors. That's for sure. Now, I, uh, the other week, because I had problems with my other case, yeah. where it's seven years long, so obviously we know that the courts are prolonging the cases. They're interfering. And I wrote a letter <laughs> requesting, after I filed a complaint against the judge with the Commission of Judicial Conduct, requesting our uh, representative, uh, John Over, to step in and formally request a grand jury inquest. <laughs> and the only thing he said was that he couldn't do it, it's not within the scope of his duties, which, which is a bunch of baloney, because he's a constitutional officer, and these are federal questions. The scope of his duty is to be a politician, go to Congress, and listen to gangs that lobby him, and pay, give patronage and payola to the block votes the unions, the bar association, and the judges that organize block vote for them to get him uh, so to get him in. Yes. Come on. Of course it's not in his interest. So I don't know if, if anybody's noticed, but they've had a few articles in the paper where <coughs> the attorneys are now putting together big sums of money for their political candidates. <laughs> Listen, that's what this country is. It's not a Republican democracy. It's well-organized gangs, well-heeled gangs and gangsters, and if you pay them, you can rob the public treasury. Sure. You set up a phony program, and they'll give you millions of dollars of payola. And of course, they want a piece of the action, so they're robbing the public, they syndicated crime, political racketeering, actually, they created sedition. 
Sure they did. They took over everything. They betrayed the people. The elections are not legal. Well, they, they certainly have control of the courts where they wrote rules where you, they can deny you the right to access the trial by jury. Now, I've been floating in the court for seven years. All right, what I want to say to you, John, before we say that, I want the people to understand this. You're a faithful guy. You have hope, you see. And I like to go along with you, right? Mm -hmm. For seven years, you've been trying to do it the right way. The right way, yep. Asking them politely to do things. And they told you to go to hell, right? Now you were right. And they told you to go to hell. Now I'm going to tell you something. Something very serious has got to be done about getting them made accountable, all right? Exactly. Now, this suit affects the pocketbook. Mr. Green, everybody understands Mr. Green. Of a lot of people that are now losing their homes. I have a mailing list. We're going to talk to them. They'll get together. But we have an obligation. So we come here on TV, cable, and we make a tape. So we take this tape and we repeat this tape everywhere. Then people understand it. We give them a copy of the law, the Constitution. And then when they tell us they're hungry, we'll point and tell them who to eat. Well, that's the way it is. That's the only way you're going to make it. You've got to get together. The disorganized mob have to get together and take those well-organized minority cliques, those corrupt, overreaching cliques. And remember, some of them have some nice names. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, part of the complaint that we have refers to Section 258, Section 2, where public employees should be liable for injury of loss of property or personal injury or death caused by negligent or wrongful act or omission of any public employee while acting within the scope of his office or employment. In the same manner and to the same extent as private individual under like circumstances. In other words, that means they're responsible for whatever they do if it's not within the scope of their duties. Now, we've also made reference in the complaint, this is the complaint that I have in front of me, uh, <clears throat> to the extent that in fraudulent assessments are equally and severally liable for damages. That's the assessors. They're personally liable. Sure they are. Because and it's not their duties. <coughs> they violated their duty and responsibility right. and caused damage and libel. And any and all of the parties who have obstructed or obstruct the plaintiff's right to recourse at law, fair and impartial trial by jury, free access to independent courts with fair and impartial judges and magistrates in accordance with the rules that are proper, necessary, reasonable, and wholesome, that are free from conflict with due process and the enactment of court rules, are also joined. Further, the plaintiffs, that's all of us, who well, sign Well, the assessors on. will learn that as soon as the Attorney General or the public attorney comes forward when the complaint is filed well, what and tries to represent them, they're going to discover that they can't, they can't represent the assessors, that the assessors must go out and get their own lawyer because the community is not liable for them acting outside their duty. And therefore, their estates can be attached and they can be learn what it feels like and the public attorney will not be able to protect them. And, uh, you know, they're acting outside their duty, so there's no judiciary responsibility to protect the policeman that goes cuckoo when he's off duty and goes kills five people down the street, whether he's got a service revolver or not, right? He's a murderer. That's right. And the community's not going to defend him. And the other policemen are going to have to lock him up and... They're going to have to handcuff them and throw them into jail and treat them like a murderer like they treat anybody else. Just because he's a policeman doesn't mean he's going to get away with it. You can't let him get away with it. You can't let the assessors get away with it. And the attorney general has to prosecute <coughs> the assessors. And we the same way you have to prosecute the murderer. And we can't let the court protect them. So we've laid into the complaint that the courts must be free from conflict with due process. In the enactment of the court rules, okay, and... Uh, they are also joined <coughs> if they protect these people as 
in association with the assessors. That means that they are party to the complaint as defendants if they protect them from giving us our due process rights to trial by jury. That the rules of the court were designed to dismiss these kinds of complaints against our officials or our elected or appointed or hired municipal workers. And the rules were not given to us or de designed, they were designed to obstruct justice and they weren't promulgated to us. They weren't given to us, like, like Bill said earlier, for our dissent so that we could say, no, this rule's not good enough because it doesn't protect us. You know, I tell you, I really respect you and appreciate you and your effort and your sincerity. And you know what you symbolize to me? You symbolize the belief the people have, the innocence of the people. Their belief, you know, they, their belief that they want to be good and they want to do it right. And, you, and you're so gentle. And I know how they're whipping and how they're taking advantage of you. And I can't stand idly by knowing how evil they are. I feel sorry for you. And I'm doing this because I really, 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 really admire, you know, your sincere effort to try to live right in a so-called Christian manner or in a manner that respects your neighbor and try to do and be responsible, live with responsibility and try to be as honest as you can in a corrupt society. And <clears throat> I know a lot of people, you know, they're so innocent. Well, of course, there are a lot of books on fairy tales, so as children they learned them. And they don't want to face reality. Reality is a terrible thing. It's like a bad nightmare sometimes. You run away from it. You chase dreams, hopes, high hopes. So I can understand it, John, but you need to fight and uh, you got to do something and the people have to fight. Well, everybody has to get together, but the idea is we put it into the complaint to make sure that we understand what they're doing wrong, <coughs> that they have to be held accountable, and that they can't use these rules to obstruct our right to trial by jury, that they are joined as parties to the complaint as defendants. This involves billions of dollars that they took away from the public illegally. This is like the other bank fiasco, they just robbed the banks a few years ago, and they went to the public treasury and they said, bail us out. Sure, well, who controls the banks? Well, the feds. They never, they never bailed out Jesse James. Well, he wasn't part of their gang. But they bailed out the bank robbers and they paid them with our money. Now, they're going to go back the second time. Right? The third time, you have to stop them. You have to make them accountable. That means we'll have to let some of those dope people out that are over there in jail, all coked up and everything else, and make room for some political Real prisoners. Criminals, yes. Maybe they should, should spend some time in jail, see how they like it. Then they could deal with the private contractor they made a deal with to whip them every morning sadistically and give them electric shocks obedience shocks that's another cruel and unusual thing that, that's, got a, a, that's a horrify that's a, a scare people you know they got a lot of things that they're gonna have to make people submit gorillas going in there one person sitting in a cell ripping out because you can't take it and instead of giving them some treatment that's humane. They go in there and they bunch on them and beat them up and everything else because they're afraid of them. Sure they are. If, if he gets loose, they got to run. Putting humans in cages like that because they did things in order to try to survive in an economy that wouldn't let them survive, that's controlled for Wall Street. Sure it is. <coughs> They've taken your tax money or your money, and made you pay taxes for somebody else, which has caused you to suffer the indignity of poverty. That's where you're at. That, that's why if you want to get any of it back, there's only one way. You have to join the complaint, and you have to make the claim, because 
the court will not give you anything if your name isn't on a piece of paper saying this was done to me too. If you want any information, we'll mail it out to you in writing. You can look it over and read it. If you have an attorney or you think you want to trust an attorney, go right ahead. Right? And uh, I'm sure he'll take your money whether he's going to do anything or not. He'll take your money. And uh, you'll have the information. Or if you feel that you're justified in not trusting an attorney, you want to do it yourself, you have a right to join in this class. And uh, maybe we'll get a guy like Nada who's looking to run for president. Well, I heard today he was on the is ballot. He, is he looking to run? Yeah, well, if he wants Massachusetts, right? All, all he has to do, do is come, come here and get people all that money. He's a, he's a good Champion. Green Party yeah. candidate or something. Okay, come over here, Mr. Nada. Show us what you can do with the courthouse. You're a smart lawyer. Get the people back their money, and I'm sure they'll vote for you. That would be a good thing. I'd, I'd like to see that happen. Well, we'll fax him out a copy. I, I know his fax number. I got his fax number. Well, if you want more information from us about the complaint or about the law, you can dial 413-663-6372, Pro Se USA. Leave a message and we'll get back to you. We'll be sending out mail if you have a mortgage anyway. You'll be getting it in the mail. There'll be an information, and there may be a copy of the suit number, uh, and uh, you can go down to the courthouse and take a look at it. <coughs> and there'll be one filed in Berkshire County, and there'll be another suit in Suffolk County, and there'll be another suit in the federal court. And uh, it might be against, you know, different other people under different circumstances. And there are other serious questions here as to whether or not we're being obstructed in getting recourse at law when they're obstructing justice because we don't know how involved and how sinister this thing might be. Uh, I think it's pretty big. It covers, obviously, it's throughout the entire state <coughs> and it's been going on since like 1881. <coughs> well, we only have a few minutes. We didn't get any calls but one. And uh, I think the best thing to do is uh, I'll get that party if he calls up and we'll give him a copy and let him read it. Uh, let him read the law, let him read what he wants, and then he can ask other people if he doesn't understand. But all we can do is give him the information. Yeah, at this point, uh, we're looking to help you. We can't help you unless you want to help us help you. We don't know who you are yet, and uh, if you're being foreclosed on, or if you have a mortgage and you're having a hard time paying all the taxes and the mortgage and everything, they created a hardship for you, and you're entitled to make a claim. I have the address, names, and addresses of everybody that has a mortgage. I already have it, statewide. I want to tell you what it cost me. It cost me about four or five thousand dollars to get it, a mailing list. All right? I didn't know you had it. I have it. It costs four or five thousand dollars. I wouldn't give a dime to a lawyer, but I'll give four or five thousand dollars and send it out to the people and let them know. I wouldn't hire a lawyer and I wouldn't take it to a court, but I'll take it out and I'll let the people know how they've been robbed. That's exactly what it is. They've been robbed. We've all been robbed. Well, we got... Uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, most of the people out there uh, that uh, would like to do something, a disillusion, they don't have any confidence or any faith in the system, and uh, they'd rather keep a low profile. Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of people under. There are a lot of people that do not scared. want to get identified. They're just scared. They don't want to oh. get involved in it because they think oh, that my God. something else will happen to them. There are a lot of people hiding. They they don't want to get in the controversy. That's exactly what it is. Oh my God! There are a lot of people that that are trying to keep a low profile. They they know how how terrible it is. And they're being forced to work two jobs. They're not at home and. 
and uh, their children are suffering and, and uh, if they actually manage to join this and we get what we're after, yeah. they could spend more time with their children One minute. not work as many jobs. They, they could actually live a much better life. Well, before we close, remember, if you get a business or a home, and you have a recorded, duly recorded mortgage that you gave to a bank, and it's recorded the registered deeds, the assessors know about it, they knew about it, and according to the law here, 5912, they had to first send a bill to the mortgagee, and then only after that, deducting that, send you the bill for the balance, and they haven't been doing that. Well, thank you, and we're running out of time, and I think that that's it, and uh, we'll be back on. Thank you very much.